Me na Isatus my sisse and today we can at the Sierra Leone Police Headquarters concerning the press briefing where the Sierra Leone Police call. Now we they go inside the conference room for go outside the press briefing. They take place. Privilege to have you once again at our press briefing. We normally meet on Thursdays, but because we consider it most expedient, we have the election, the rerun elections, which took place in Constituency 110. And that is why we have decided to call up this press briefing and to make our positions clear with regards to what happened at Constituency 110. I guess there are a lot of information that are in the social media. A lot of people have been interviewed, but nevertheless, it's good for you to have the police side. That is why we have decided to hold back a bit, look into the matter critically, and be able to see what position we are going to take. And after we have actually discussed the issue, we have looked at the investigation, at the investigative report, and so that is why we are here to give you a corporate position with regards to the rerun elections in constituency 110. And I want to appreciate you all this afternoon for sparing your valuable time to attend this press briefing. And the number is very, very encouraging. That shows the interest that you have in the police press briefings, which we are conducting from time to time. But by way of introduction, I want you to see or to know that we have very senior colleagues that are with us here this afternoon. I will start from my far right, one of our Young officers who are coming up is part of the Media and Public Relations Unit, Simeon, Inspector. He is working with the media team. And further to that, even as I come closer, is one of our outstanding one-star general, <laughs> Assistant Inspector General of Police, Brian Maja. He is the, our crime buster. He is overseas, <coughs> the directorate of crime services. It's a pleasure Thank having you, sir. Thank you very much. And on my immediate right, I have my brother, who also have exhibited outstanding performance in the northeastern region. It was the regional commander in that area, that is the Bombali area. And because of his outstanding performance, management has taught its feet to transfer him to the Freetown West region. And there he has been performing exemplarily. And is no less a person that Assistant Inspector General of Police, Ambrose Sovula. He is the regional commander for Freetown West, covering from the Central Business District that is um, PZ or Sagwa Street area onto the peninsula. He has a wide coverage and we are here under his auspices. He is the one who is policing the headquarters. He is responsible for, for that. He has a wide range of responsibility. So it's good for us to note um, 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 what our officers are doing. And on my far um, 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 Right, also, we have the local unit commander. Um, he is in charge of the Godrich Division, where the elections took place, the rerun elections. And he is superintendent in Bio. He is the one who sits in that area. That is his jurisdiction, and he is responsible to, pol I mean, to police they are don't care area godrich area is responsible for that and it was very 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 instrumental in trying to put the structures in place with regards to the rerun elections you are most welcome my brother in but well, you never welcome me oh you are most you welcome spoke highly about me but you never welcome me. oh you are most welcome yeah yeah <laughs> thank, thank you very much <laughs> yeah. 
And as I move around, you see another renowned officer who has displayed, a, you know, an exemplary um, performance and professionalism in his discharge of his duty. He has been catapulted because of his outstanding performance. And he happens to be the second in command for the Operational Support Division, the OSD. And he has the national responsibility. When I mean national responsibility, all OSD throughout the length and breadth of this country, he is responsible for them. He is the second in command, and they take command and control from him. It's a pleasure having, I uh, mean, Chief Superintendent Tawa. Tawa, you are most welcome. Thank you. And all, one of our, you are most welcome. One of our newly, um, um, officers who have been outstanding in the field of academia. He has been performing so well and he has been awarded um, an honorary causa. He is now a doctor, Dr. Senesi. <laughs> honorary causa. He is Dr. now John Martin Senesi. Uh, yeah, Martin Senesi. He is the operations officer for the Operational Support Division, the OSD. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and Media One has just arrived. That shows the importance we place to this press conference of today. So we, I guess all of you know me. I don't need to introduce myself, except you wonder. Yeah. You know me. You know, I am Assistant Inspector General of Korea, a UN breed. Officer <laughs> yeah. performed in the United Nations African mission in Dakar. Wow. Yeah, it serves as a sector commander, the first Sarajanian to maintain that I came back with Lawrence after serving for three years and two months. That's me, Kalia Edwards. You say, Thank you very much. You are most welcome. We want to start the, going into the nitty gritty of things this afternoon with regards to the rerun election which took place last Saturday at Constituency 110. I will first of all start by calling upon the regional commander who covers that entire area. He would explain to you how we have structured everything, the preparation before, during, and after. He will tell you everything and what happened during the entire election hearing process and what I mean has caused these investigations and our position as at now. So without further delay, I want to call upon my colleague, my brother, one of the one star general also, Assistant Inspector General of Police, Ambrose Sobula, to lay the foundation for this press briefing with regard to the real run elections. I thank you very much, Mr. Kalia Sisi. And um, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for coming. And uh, I want to <coughs> give you some synopsis with regards to our operation in the Freetown West with regards to the rerun election. The responsibility of the police is to police before, during, and after the conduct of the election, of any election, of, of any given operational situation in the country of Sierra Leone, because the police is charged with primary responsibility of internal security. Before we undertook the venture, we prepare what we refer to as operational orders stating what to do, how to do, who to do, and when to do. The operational orders was prepared, and a day before the election was read out to personnel that we are drawing out from all various divisions and other areas for them to understand what entails in that operational orders. 
we may maybe call it briefing of personnel. That briefing was not done by me alone, but it attracted the director of operations who spoke of operational integrity to personnel. That was supported by the director of crime services who also spoke on involvement in crime in that operation. The briefing was climaxed by the good messages that came from the DIG, all bordering on ethics and ethos of the police organization before the posting of the personnel to various positions. There were so many various, uh, you know, police, uh, police centers, and the centers are having police stations. We decided to deploy at each police station one or two to a station. And if the center is having about five or six, we will now put four or five people. We were having sufficient personnel, but because of the cry out that a lot of policemen we cause people not to come to vote. It appeared that we are intimidating people. So the general police duty personnel were posted minimum at the gate, the entrance, where people will enter. That is how the postings happen throughout the constituency where people were to vote. And uh, if I may come to the subject matter that brought us here, that is the Sierra School, Sierra Model School. We look at the Tonko Limba model and improve on it so that we can customize it to suit the most cosmopolitan area in the western area. And uh, at Sarah Model, Sarah Model is a palm body structure with the L curve that is just having a small gate. Where people pass through to go to vote. There are 10 stations in that center. And we are all aware that each police station is having two party agent is having neck officer of course they do conduct election and is having observers so if you look at the number of political parties four times two per station if you get that then you are having a multiply by ten multiply by ten so you will be having something like 80 people within that palm body, alone. palm body structure. And the police are out here making sure that how, once they have identified somebody to go and vote, does not cause a chaos. When the incident happens, we are called and our response time we are very okay. But the few general duty police that we are there, we are overwhelmed. You can imagine the number of people I have said, and there have been some, you know, uh, muscle stretching between to the two giant parties. And before the <coughs> non leather policemen could able to control the situation, some damages have caused before the arrival of the reinforcement to which I also came, probably with my colleagues, but not have been our intervention. I'm too certain there will have been a bad precedent that will have caused the loss of life. Because people we are now descending from all angles in order to enter there.
somebody was arrested, caught, as reported that he was caught carrying a box, and he was arrested with a box. And the box, I'm um, too certain, is part of what police investigating, and the person was taken to the police station there. Some one identity card also was brought in as somebody who was caught but ran away and he was hung by his ID card. He ran, dropping the box, and the ID card was left. That one also was given to police. And the only way we could stop from not having much of incidents is to use the canisters which cause the disperse of people immediately. The CID we are invited to come and look at what has happened and institute investigation into what. A lot of your colleagues we are there Maybe during the investigation, they will be able to help police with information that they must have captured by filming and the likes, so that we'll be able to get down to the bottom of the situation. So far, so good, Mr. Carrier, Mr. Jar, my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, that is what we experienced during that operation. Otherwise, all other stations, one station was also having some problem. We went and spoke. I spoke to Dr. Richard Conte at is it one house. I spoke with him. We spoke lengthy. The pulling stopped for a while, but it later resumed, and it went successfully. So that is just one of that brought this calamity that caused us to have been here today. I want to thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you very much, Assistant Inspector General of Police, Ambrose Sovula, for your statement this afternoon. I believe it's so clear. You tried to inform us, one, that this uh, model, preparatory school, was a mixed structure. It's not as big as what you would expect, but it had it, it, I mean, two centers, pooling centers. Yeah. The center, yeah. with and center and ten police stations. Each one of the centers have <coughs> five pooling stations, so it's ten in all. This is what he, he has explained. And you have, for each of the stations, you have two party representatives in each. So you have three. Each center, you have about four party four, 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 four. So we are so talking about eight. Yeah, so eight. Multiply and by you ten. Yeah, that is minute. 80. Um, so it's 80. Excluding we are, we are the observers yeah, yeah. and the uh, I'm, 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 I know you are ready. <laughs> so 80, and then you look at the police and those who are coming to cast their votes. And so immediately this thing erupted, you know, how uh, the skirmishes and everything that took place. But nevertheless, the matter is under investigation. So uh, may I just call on... Um, Mr. Tower or, 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 or Senesi, doctor, to explain to us with regard to the OSD, you know, arrangement and the checkpoints and all those things that we are in place, so that we know exactly, we have a feel, even though some of us we are not there, we we'll have a feel of what happened. And when it comes to questions, that you ask more questions, and then we'll all see the entire scenario of what really happened. So before ever I will call upon Mr. Bramaja, who will zoom a little bit on the investigation that is ongoing at the moment. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Kalia. I'm Francis Moses, our Deputy Director of OSD. And uh, Mr. Sura, the AIG Free Towers, has said it all. But just uh, uh, to re echo some of the areas in terms of our own deployment strategy. On that day, or before that day, we are deployed not around police centers. That is not our mandate. We are asked to have checkpoints and a distance deployment. And the areas concerned, there was a deployment 
at the junctions leading to one of the candidates. So we are focused at that area to make sure no, uh, I mean, people from elsewhere to enter or to go to the house of one of the candidates. And also, we are having another deployment, and another candidate. I mean, there are two candidates really in this matter, the APC and the SFPP. So we provided security for them, and also for their house, and also entrance, and also body uh, 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 police we are provided. So we are having also deployment at almost like a checkpoint at the entrance of Hamilton. I'm not so uh, aware of this area, but at that Hamilton. is Hamilton. Hamilton. And also, before this election, there was, invo there was MACB invocation. That is the joint operation with the military. So all of this, we are over the SF, uh, Sierra Leone OSDs is being deployed. There are also military personnel deployed. So we are having deployment yes. in some of the areas. So at that particular given time, we are monitoring and uh, calling from all angles that uh, election is going on peaceful, there's no problem. Yeah, we are policing, we are, we are patrolling, monitoring. I even, there was having a call from one of the citizens, I cannot name him because I don't know his name, but he knows my number. So he calls on me that there is a problem at Wamai, Wan Os. Wan Os police station. I don't know where Wan Os police station is there. So he tried to define and show me the area. So I went there with my team to see what really is happening there. So I went there and, uh, but you know, it was not like a real tension or promotion or confusion. It's just an observation. One Mr. Emmanuel Biango, Blango, that uh, some, one, one, he saw somebody videoing him and he has made a post in the media that he has stopped election and uh, he has said it's a power from above. And uh, thank God AYB was there. So I requested that, because he sees the phone of that person. And I, I spoke with my police officer that we had deployed at the place. So I requested for the phone. Said, where is the phone? And with a vast uh, explanation from Mr. Biango, before allowing him to talk. So a lot of systems were put in place for him to hand out over this phone to me, and he did. He said he's not going to hand over this phone to me because he not trust me. I said, well, now that I'm in uniform, and AYV is now getting information from me. So anywhere you can go to AYV or everywhere, anywhere you can go to request for me. My name's uh, Francis Moses Tower. I'm the deputy. I have introduced myself to you. So please hand over the phone to me so that you can make your report, then their investigation has start. So with a lot of persuasion, he was able to hand over this phone to me. And I took this phone to the, to the I don't care police station booked and also take the phone to the ICC. ICC is what normally in terms of policing, we have incident command center. Whatever happens, we we'll go there and log what has happened. So I took this phone there and it was logged. But because of the suspicion and the uh, entity behind this phone, I did not left it there because as far as police is concerned, a senior officer is liable to handle uh, exhibit. So I keep this one in my possession so that when Mr. Blanco come to the CID and made his complaint, and the phone will be handed over to him. That is the phone you are seeing. Uh, on that day, especially, we are patrolling. I was as far as uh, Mitimangai uh, Police Center, Patricia. Patricia, it's not Lady Patricia. Patricia there. So, 
They call me that there is a problem around Sierra, if I had to say, Sierra model. But I'm not a fame of the terrain. I don't know where Sierra model really is. So we came, we passed, we go as far as uh, number two river. Then later somebody told me that no, come back to uh, after Hamilton eh, Junction, then you can see Sierra model. Unfortunately, why coming? I joined together with my commissioner, the AIG Freetown West. He also was heading to the scene. So we went there. Really, it was not easy even to access the entrance to go to that place in case of any other issues. So the police officer that we are the player at that particular uh, school, if you go to Sierra uh, Preparity School, the structure and the position of that place and the entrance, you know, there is, there is a structure and you have the fence, right arm, and back of it, there is a small uh, 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 slope towards the, the Ogu farm. I don't know how they call that place. Then there is another passage coming by the restroom area, the toilet part, how they call it, the toilet, or the restroom area. So there was a lot of small, small parts that can lead into that police, uh, that police center without even the police can know. So there was a lot of, I mean, we went there with a very, in a very chaotic manner. People we are fighting. I don't know who we are fighting. I cannot identify anybody who we are fighting. But there was a lot of fighting going on. And the police officers there, we are overwhelmed. They were overwhelmed. So the best thing I can do with my team, because I was having some CS weapon with my, in my possession, I just tried to curtail the, 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 the police officer so that we can, we can form either CCU or PSU so that we can go to the scene and try to disperse it. It was not easy to do that. It was, it was not easy. Even to access the, 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 the cell compound, it was not easy. It was not easy. Nobody can listen. They, we can talk to these people, we can talk to these people, no people listening. This is our ground, this is with this, this with that. We don't want to see police, you see. We are going to kill police officer, we are going to bomb police officer, but we don't listen to this. So my men, I try to force my way to enter into that place. It was not easy for me to access into, into that premises, that scene. We enter there and before that, a lot of uh, commotion has occurred. So we, we started effecting arrests. We arrest. Why arresting? I may arresting. They are giving some of these people to other police officers to take them to the police police station. In fact, I do arrest one man who was running with a, as what as what my commander has said, who was running with a ballot box. Two of them. So we chase him, chase them. One of the of the of the source of the of the person, I don't know his particulars, I don't know his position, he dropped. The, 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 the barrel box and he was arrested. The other one ran away and dropped the uh, barrel box, but unfortunately his ID card dropped. So we are able to take the ID card also and surrender the ID card to the, to the commissioner. So in that, there is a lot of spirits stone on us from all angles. So the, 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 the rules of engagement orders me to, 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 to disperse crowds. So I take it necessary for me to uh, use, to uh, alert one of my men to, to use CS so that the crowd disperse. That is how we are able to curtail the system. And I be that, then today we'll be talking about uh, life laws and this, that. So that's all I know on that day and that's how we are able to control and put the situation under control. So if you are here, that is what I know about that place. Uh, thank you very much, um, CSP Francis Tower. He has rightly explained how he was able to contain the situation and how the police who were deployed <coughs> at that place were overwhelmed because of the numbers. People who were voters, those that were within, you see we have done all the calculations and how the things do happen. You have time for questioning. But well, this is what he has explained and how this it's we really planned ourselves. But well, nevertheless this thing has happened.
But as we make progress, may I just call upon our crime officer, the assistant inspector general of police, Bramajia, who is the crime service, a director of crime services, is going to tell us some of the uh, findings or as far as the crime issues are concerned and how the investigations have been conducted. Thank you very much, uh, yeah. Mr. Sisse. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Sese actually uh, did not include equally that uh, uh, it was a in the UN. Oh! Yes. <laughs> I was there as international professional staff, <coughs> resident at Addis Ababa overlooking <laughs> Darfur. <laughs> Boy, and boss. prior to that, <laughs> I have been going to Kofiana International Peacekeeping Training Center as consultant. So we have a wider experience of policing for over three decades, actually. I'm 32 years in the police. Um, we did, starting from what my colleagues have said, did our level best by putting together experiences from where we successfully conducted elections and then converging as people having spent substantial period in the police to sort of consult and I may agree on how to police it. We patrolled to number two river. We came back and forward. As the um, commander said, uh, Freetown West, there were some problems at uh, one house. We went, we addressed that. One house. One house. One house. One house. He's speaking. He's speaking. We addressed that. Yeah, yeah. And then we came back to that one. Uh, actually go there as a kind of reinforcement. But you just imagine this uh, um, Sierra Model Preparatory School. The, apart from being a makeshift structure, the, the, the inner space is not as big as where we are sitting. You can go and watch the clip or you could spare time to visit there. When you go with the L shape, the space left at the middle is not as big as this conference room where we are now all sitting. And then you have 80 people there. 80, as we did the calculation, the arithmetic, um, two per party, four going to eight, ten polling stations. So we are talking about 8 multiplied by 10, that is 80. Excluding the observers, the, um, the neck officials. So they themselves actually would have provided crowd in such a tight place. And the police were not allowed inside. That has been the usual thing. They are outside. They ensure that there is security around. So the time we got there, the place was very chaotic. While we were containing outside, people mobilizing to come. In fact, some uh, tear gas canisters were shot there, were fired. By the time we had concluded that, we were informed that they had actually torn apart those ballot box, box, uh, box, boxes. As we can see, somebody said, oh, we could see one or two police officers there. But looking at the seriousness of what happened there, the police were overwhelmed. We were overwhelmed. And even when we were patrolling, some political party leaders were calling us to say we are over-policing. That was just mere patrol. They have restrained us to the point that you should not deploy in a very huge number because that will scare away people from good. So it's just, uh, the whole situation was a uh, catch. 22 situation. But however, we did our level best because no life was lost. The arrests were made and that is pending investigation at um, Lomley Police Station. But look, looking at this seriousness, we have just instructed that uh, they should bring it over to CID headquarters. So that is all what I can say. We did our level best. Yes. But okay. We are overwhelmed. Yeah, thank you very much, Assistant Inspector General of Police, Brahma Ja.
Thank you, sir. I want to say, you know, as he concluded, that we are always in a catch. Uh, 22 situation. 22 situation. We are in, if we under police and we are overpowered, they will say, oh, look at Sayadu police. And when we over police, they will say, ah, ah, are these people are, away people. they are scaring people. So, so we are always caught in the middle. But nevertheless, you have one of the fine police institutions in, in Africa, you know. And I want to thank you very much for listening. As you don't listen to the updates where the police gave concerning the incidents where Apple now word 110 on Saturday during the by election. Me wake up with this program to na today. Me your name na Isatu Smile CC. So, so we meet again to another press briefing where the police go call. I say, Tata.